Hello, and welcome back to Down Does Things. I am Dano, and thanks so much for watching this video. I didn't want to adjust my camera twice, so uh, here I am doing my intro on the floor. Hi, Dory. <laughs> Dory does things now. Lots to smell. Today, I'm going to be making two little wet felted bowls. They're going to be sort of like little catch-all dishes, you know, where you can put your rings or change or something like that. Honestly, it's a bit of an experiment. Uh, I haven't done this exactly before, but I've done some wet felting now and I really wanted to uh, do experiments. So come along with this journey and maybe you'll be able to make it as well. Because if I can figure it out, you can definitely figure it out. So let's go. ASMR. All right, so I have all of my supplies here. Now what I'm going to do is make one shape that I'm gonna then cut in half and it's going to form two bowls. So I've made this little template. It's a round template just of bubble wrap. You can use any sort of thicker plastic. And so what I'm gonna do is felt all the way on this side, felt on this side, so I'll have a sort of disc, but the resist here will be in the middle so the middle part, part won't get all felted together. Then I'm gonna cut it in half and I'll end up with two bowl shaped things. Theoretically, I will end up with two bowl shaped objects. I have my felting mat here, which is just one of those old sushi mats. It's actually kind of falling apart, but it still works. And I've got two other pieces of bubble wrap to use to actually felt it. And uh, I'll explain the rest as we go. So we'll start with, I've got a towel down, the felting mat, piece of bubble wrap, and we're gonna put down our resist here to start the layers. So I'm gonna do a couple of different colored layers. I think I'm gonna do some white and blue on the inside, so it's a bit kind of mottled, and then I'm gonna do a thicker layer of black on the outside, uh, so it'll be black on the outside and this blue-white on the inside. The first layer that you put down is going to be your inside, so you wanna think about what you want that to look like before you start. Now I want some blue in there, so I'm gonna start with this. This is actually a uh, wool roving that I hand dyed with indigo. So I'm starting with just a few little pieces and you gotta remember this is two sides of the bowl. So if I'm thinking about this bottom half, what do I want it to look like? I'm gonna just put some of these small pieces kind of around the edges and it's almost so it'll be like going up the bowl. We'll see how that works. Who even knows? That's the thing about felt is even if you know what you're doing with wet felting, it often just comes out a little different than maybe you thought it would. And I kind of love that. It's kind of a bit of a experiment every time. Even if you do the exact same steps, the exact same way, it's still gonna be a little different each time. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of the blue there. And then since the top half again is another bowl, I'm just gonna kind of mirror it on this side. Sure, let's go with that. Now I'm going to be putting my first layer of building felt on top. So I'm gonna do everything in vertical lines this time. You're sort of roughly covering that resist shape, but you don't need to be exact because you will be able to fold down the edges around afterwards. Just make sure it's fairly even so you don't have bald spots. Okay, so that's my first layer that's going vertical and now I'm gonna do a layer that's going horizontal. You always want to alternate with vertical and horizontal layers. Okay, it's time to wet this down for the first time. I've got my big bowl of hot water over here and I'm going to add some soap. Some people add soap directly to their projects, some add it to the water. I've been adding it to the water because I have a lot of this olive oil soap, uh, this pure olive oil soap that I actually grated and it dissolves really nice in the water. So we're just gonna add a decent chunk of that 
to the water. Now this water is pretty hot, so I'm just going to use my uh, little sprinkler thing here to mix in the soap so that I don't burn my hands. Now we're going to start by wetting down this side. You want it to be pretty wet. If you think you're using too much water, you probably aren't. It's better to have a little too much than a little too little. Oh, a big chunk of soap. All right, now that's the first side. So we're going to put our other piece of bubble wrap over that. We're going to smooth it out and then we're going to flip it. So now we should be able to take this off and have the resist on this side. Perfect. So you can see there's that blue from that first layer and then we have the white. So now we're going to tuck the white in over our resist so that it takes on that shape. And then we're gonna do the same sort of layering on this side. Always best to have dry hands when you're grabbing dry wool. So we'll do some more of this blue decoration-y wool. And then we'll repeat the process with the white, first doing a vertical and then a horizontal layer. So I just realized I'm actually almost out of white wool. So instead of trying to scrimp and do two layers, I'm just going to do the horizontal layer in blue because uh, why not? Like I said, this is an experiment and we will see what happens. All right, time to wet it down again. We'll put the bubble wrap back on, press it down and flip again. Now we can peel that top layer off and we can fold over again. So we're making sure that those edges are going to be really secure. Now that's my inside layer. So now I'm going to start working on my outside layer. So I'm going to actually do four layers of black. So we're going to do vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, but flipping in between each vertical and horizontal one. We did the final flip so that we can tuck our ends here. And now we're actually going to start felting. Quick tea break. Quick find my felting supplies break. So when I start felting, I usually you just, you can just sort of rub on here, but I like to use another piece of felt and it can just be store-bought felt. It doesn't have to be wet felted, um, but I find that it just goes over the surface really well to help start smoothing things down. You're not really agitating it too much at this point. You're just giving it a little bit of friction to start adhering. Everything you do, you got to do on both sides. So we'll flip. Now in my experience, learning felting online, everybody has a different way of doing it. Some people use bubble wrap, some people use tools, some people don't use anything at all, some people use these bamboo mats, some people don't, some people use rollers, some people don't. It just kind of, it's kind of all over the place. You basically just need heat, water, and agitation, and some soap to 
to get the things, the, the wool to felt together. So however you achieve that is fine. Uh, I would encourage you to look up different felting techniques and try them out, different wet felting techniques and sort of see which, which one works for you. So we can see this is already starting to come together. And now we're going to start rolling it. We're going to do it very lightly at first, almost no pressure at all. And we're just gonna roll it back and forth about 30 times. Now, once we've done it that way, we're going to turn this whole thing, what is that, 180? 180 degrees? And we're gonna do the same thing, but from that direction. Again, not putting any pressure really on it, just very lightly rolling. So now that we've rolled it this way and we've rolled it this way, we wanna roll it this way and this way. So each side is going to be rolled in four directions and you want to do it for each side. So now we're gonna roll up and down because we did a 90 degree turn. I know math. And turn. Now that I've rolled it all four ways on this side, we're going to, you guessed it, flip it and do the exact same thing on this side. Rolling it about 30 times each way. All right. Now you can see it's definitely coming together. When you lift this up, it comes up as a full piece. So you can tell that it's pulling away from the resist. Now, the way that I like to wet felt, I sort of take away a piece of my rolling equipment each time, like a layer. So now I'm going to roll with the wooden mat, one piece of bubble wrap and my roller. And so the wooden mat will be directly onto our shape. And yes, we are going to do 30 turns each way on each side again. You can get a little bit more aggressive with this one because now we're really trying to get the felt going. Now I actually have to pay attention to how many times I fold and roll because I often lose count and uh, you might call me out on this one. Okay, now we're going to take all the bubble wrap out of the process and it's felting really nicely actually, which is fantastic. Uh, and we're almost to the point where we want to cut it out. So this is pre-felt, so it's not completely felted yet, uh, but we don't want it to be before we cut it because we want to be able to actually felt those edges and make sure that they get nice and flat too. So I'm just gonna give it a few good rolls on just the wooden mat and then we're gonna cut it. Okay, I think it's time to cut this in half. Not gonna lie, it's a little nerve wracking. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm gonna actually kind of line it up with this line on my mat so that I can get a maybe straight line. So I just cut right at the edge there so that I can, I wanna be able to save my resist if I can. So we'll see if I can Cut into that and find the center here. Ah, right, there it is. Okay. Now we've got two vaguely bowl-shaped vessels. So obviously we're gonna need to do a little bit more shaping and uh, make them more bowl-like because they were flat in a circle. And they're also going to be a little wonky because of just how the resist was, but we can do that by more felting. So I'm just gonna start by wrapping this up on itself and starting to felt. I'm gonna turn this inside out so I can really get a good felt on this side because that side was on the inside and didn't get felted as well. 
messy and flattening it a bit, but once we get into it, we can shape it how we want. Once it's nice and felty. Now I'm just throwing this down to get some good fulling going. Fulling? Felting? Forget the term, but it helps it shrink down quite quickly. Now I'm just rolling in the edges and it's going to shrink in the direction that I'm rolling it. So pay attention and make sure you're doing it in all directions that you want it to shrink in. Okay, I had a phone alarm go off, so I hope that it didn't affect too much of the filming, but we are just still here felting our wool. Now I'm just kind of giving it the shape that I want it to have when it dries. I want it to be sort of a little cylindrical sort of bowl. And felt is great, wool felt is great because it really turns into the shape that you want it to when it's dry. All right, so you can see how much different this piece looks from this piece, which I haven't done the second part of felting yet. So I'm gonna do that and then I will meet you back with the finished project. Wow, look, a little wet felted bowl. What can you put in your bowl, you ask? Great question. You can use it for tiny scissors, jewelry, loonies and toonies, little crystals, one big crystal, paints, scrunchies, your watch when you're in the shower, dice, other things you've felted, more wool, those screws you accumulated over the years and you feel bad throwing out but have no use for, Polaroids of your cat, and your very last nerve. I hope you enjoyed this wet felting video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe for more crafty videos every Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week.